Hello everyone. In the last video, I said we would talk about how my first base came to be, how I recruited my first base mates, and how this shaped key aspects of Constantium. The first thing we're going to need to talk about is how you behave in anarchy. I'm not going to claim that I am a good example or any kind of expert in these matters, and I think you'll soon see why. When I joined Constantium, I kept to myself the first couple hours, but that was pretty much it. Very soon, I started talking in chat, and for the most part, I was ignored. No one particularly wants to interact with you when all you're doing is using server chat as a makeshift personal diary. As we've established, I liked the 50k monument quite a bit, and so I decided to stay close. I set out to build a base, and I figured 6 to 8,000 blocks away would be enough distance that I wouldn't be found quickly, at least. So I made my way diagonally into the positive axes. I've always liked the standard colored grass that you find on plains and forests, so that's pretty much what I was looking for. I came upon a birch forest, and noticed that where it became sparse and transitioned into a regular forest, there was a nice elevated hill overlooking the nearby biome intersections, so I just decided to start building a tower. I didn't exactly know what I was doing, but I knew what I wanted in a general sense. I wanted to have a big base that people would enjoy and talk about like the ones I had seen on YouTube videos. That is a pretty hard ticket to accomplish when you are just one man, so I knew I had to bring some people on board. Having no experience or connections, I needed a way to find out who I could trust. You never really know who's out to pull one over on you, so I had to be smart. I came up with an intelligent, flawless plan to ensure my success. That's when I noticed 2T2B logging into the server. I figured that he must be relatively nearby and that anyone building access monuments had a lower chance of wanting to kill me, so I messaged him. When 2T2B entered my tracer range, I had just about finished one third of the tower. That was how I found my first basemate. I wasn't done though. If I intended on building or being part of something that would leave a mark on Constantium, I needed more people, and so I kept actively recruiting in the chat. Two more people answered the call. Patter101 Buffoon and Zachary Recupero. These were the four players who built the majority of New Hope as it stood in its prime. As we got to know each other and built together, we started depleting the space made for us by 2T2B's walls. I would travel the 50k and spawn semi-frequently to meet new players or to simply keep an eye on how things were developing and I always kept recruiting. In total, eight players either based or were supposed to base at New Hope. By the end of July, Zack and 2T2B had been invited to join Delphi by its founders, Sir Leonidas and Lagenstoop. On the 1st of August of 2016, we logged in to find personalized messages in the town square. 2T2B took the time to wish each of us farewell. The active players at this time were me, Patty, Zach, and Max Thomas123. Around the second week of August, Patty had moved out, and I remained at New Hope with the newer members to finish the underground portion I had started. I had plans to move out towards the end of the month, and I intended to leave New Hope in the care of the three other people I had recruited. They were Tango vs. the World, Apolistic, 
and Croc, who never actually made it. It was in that month that things started to go south. The first thing that happened was I'd find single, light grey glass panes placed around town. You could barely see them, and this made it almost impossible to speed hack without getting stuck. Though this was innocent enough trolling, it was only the beginning. Sometime later, I discovered that all the mending villagers were dead. Then, on the 25th, I logged in and found a portal that had been lit not 30 blocks from the town entrance. Tango was AFK at the zombie spawner, and the others weren't online yet, so I climbed the tower while I waited for them, and that's when Sir Leonidas messaged me. That was the last I saw of Tango. Almost. So, what happened to New Hope? Well, it was griefed by jetting, but it didn't stay that way. I later returned from Delphi, ungriefed New Hope, and rebuilt it. When I returned, there was one stripe remaining from the original red flag, and I decided to keep it. I replaced the rest with white wool to symbolize its downfall and surrender. A lot of the redstone and coal blocks from the underground passage were mined away, so I replaced those with granite and diorite for the minecart tunnel portion. I then used New Hope as a testing ground. I gave out its coordinates to people interested in old bases or players whose trust I wanted to put to the test. To my recollection, I gave out the cords to Zombies, Tretical, and Snipin' Nukes, who even decided to build a small house there. New Hope still exists in a ruined state, as you can see from this footage, but there was something else there that no one found since my second return, and that no one can ever find. When I ungriefed New Hope, I mined Tango's house away, and I replaced it with the original terrain, thus erasing all signs that he was ever there. It's kind of ironic that I should immortalize his tale in video format now. I hope you guys liked the story of my first base and that you found some interest in learning how the first of the Delphi crowd met each other. In the next video, we'll tackle how the whole group came together and start examining the many stories of that much talked about Constantium base. 
Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time.